Hello everybody, my name is Alan from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about TrueNAS. But not just about TrueNAS, will be a mix between TrueNAS and Nextcloud. And you're gonna ask me, Alan, why you want to show me this video? It's because in the previous video I show how you can do the sync between your Google Drive and your TrueNAS. And that some people ask, Alan, you comment that we can do it or the same process using the Nextcloud. So you can show us how can I do it? And this way I decided yes, it's a good option and I will show how you can sync your TrueNAS to your Nextcloud. In this way you can make kind of backup from your TrueNAS to your Nextcloud and with the history you can see what is modified, what has been deleted. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel and let's see it. So before I start to show how you can do this sync, I will go for the basics. Here it's my system, it's installed through NAS 12.U7. I don't know if you're gonna have the same version or the future version when you're gonna see this video or when you're gonna install it, but don't worry, it should not be so much different. It will be a little bit different in the names, but uh, should be base, pretty much the same. Before I start to show how you can do this sync, I will go to the basics. The system that I'm using is a generic platform where it has installed the TrueNAS 12U7 and I have an old processor, so it's i5-3570K, where I have four cores, I have only 80GB of RAM and I have two hard drives. Each hard drive has 500GB, but they're working mirror, so I have only 500 in total. Also, my internet connection is a gigabyte connection and my IP address is 192.168.1.38. If I come here in uh, plugins, I have a few applications, but the one that we're gonna look will be this uh, Nextcloud. If I open here, I have already Nextcloud installed and this Nextcloud has already the external access working. So I can come here and open this IP address where I already open here and I have access for it. If I come here and if I select post notes, I have already this user with this password created. If I come here back and I put users, I will find the users that I create. In my case, I have only two users. The first one will be the standard user that come when you install Nextcloud on your TrueNAS. And the second one will be the Sauber Lab that we're gonna use to do all the syncs and all the setups. But uh, you wanna ask, I can come here and use this information? No, because in order to work the web dev, you need to have uh, external access. So I already created my website, and this website I'm using cloud.sauberlab.com, and here I already have my files. Here are my files, if I come here in settings, I have my information for my web dev. So I can come here and copy this web dev, and now I can go back for my true NAS and start to do all the setup. What setup that I need to have? I need to have two things. In TrueNAS work a little bit different because first you need to create all your credentials that will connect to, for all your cloud. So if you have Nextcloud, you need to create one credential. If you have a Google Drive, you need to create another credential. If you have a Dropbox and continue on, you need to create one credential for each application. So if I come here in System and I come here in my credential or Cloud credential, I have only one credential created yet. This one is the same one that we used in the last video where I show how you can connect your Google Drive to your TrueNAS or your TrueNAS to the Google Drive. If I come here add, I have a few options that I can do, but first let's define the name, will be next, next cloud. will be Nextcloud and here the providers. I will find a provider called Nextcloud. No, you're not gonna find because as I told you, we're gonna need to use web dev, so I can come here, web dev, and here appear what kind of uh, connection or web dev service that you want. You can select Nextcloud, OnCloud, SharePoint, and others. In my case, I will leave Nextcloud, and I will paste that URL that I copied before. So now I can add my user, and I will add my password. How I know that's working? We can check it before we go for the next step. To check, we come here and put verify the credential, and it will process if they appear credential valid, so it's working, I can come here and put submit. We finish. 
No, we didn't finish because we didn't find any sync or any task to do. So in this way, I can sync and come here in task. I have a lot of different tasks that I can run, but in our case, we're gonna use cloud sync task. Here in the cloud sync task, I will need to create a new task. I will come here and add. I will put description, it will be a next cloud pool. And here I have the direction. I can select pull that they will pull all the information for the next cloud to my true NAS. And if I put push, they will push all the information from my true NAS to my next cloud. In my case, I want to pull, and you're gonna ask why Alan you want to pull. So I come here in my SMB, and my SMB have my file here. If I look it, I don't have any information in my Cyberlab folder. So if I try to push, they will not have any information to push, so it will not work. I come here and pull, I select the location that I want come here and put Sauber Lab. And if I select copy, they will copy all the information. If I have, again, more information, they overwrite and overwrite and it's gonna replace a lot of the data. If I put sync, they will check what information change or what information I don't have, what file that I don't have, and they will sync, sync and create it. One thing that you cannot forget is the type of credential. Depending on what credential that you set, you will have a, a different way to log in or different way to access it. So let's go for next cloud and I can select all the files. I can go and select some specific files, yes, if I want, but I want to be a backup for everything. Here I can define what's the schedule, how often I want the, this backup happen. So I come here and put daily, hourly, weekly, in my case, I will put daily because once a day it's right. If I put it too often, maybe it will start to be annoying or a little bit slow my system. And I think that if you lose pretty much one day of your day, depending on how much you use, will not affect so much. If you use a lot and you think that will impact too much your job, yes, please put less. Now I can come here and define some pre-script or post-script. I really don't know what this one, so if you know what this pre-script or pause script, please leave your comments and that maybe I can look better on it or maybe you can help me. Now I can define what kind of exclude that I want. Let's say I don't want that they copy any ISO file. So I put ISO file and now they don't copy it. They will only look for that information and ignore it. Why ISO? Because normally it's big. I can put MKV, that's it's uh, 4K videos and continue on. So I can remote encrypt my data. If you're using your next cloud or you use one server that have next cloud and you know that server, yes, you don't need to put encrypt. You can always come here, encrypt your files and define a password. But in my case, I'm not doing it because it's my server for my server. So I can have control for everything. It's totally fine. Now I can define how much transfers or the bandwidth that I want to limitate and I put submit. Once that submit, I can come here, I can do the first job. I don't need to wait until midnight because otherwise you guys will wait for a long time, no? So I can come here and put run it now, continue and close. Now they will start to run it. If I click here, they start to come all the information, how much they are downloading, how much time will take as well. It will take around a few seconds, so let's wait. Okay, well, once that it's completed, I can come here my SNB and refresh this page and now I have all the information here. So I have my data, my thoughts that I have copy and my documentation, everything. Okay, suppose that I come here, my next cloud, I select everything and I delete all my files from the next cloud. And that I say, oh my gosh, I just delete everything, I don't have anything else in my next cloud. What can I do? I can recover my delete files, but suppose that I don't want to recover it. I can want to do the reverse step. I have two options. I can come here and put hey store. I select what I want, sync. Let's put a uh, next cloud push because they will do basically a push now. Now I select what information that I want to do. So I come here and I will put as a sync, sorry. All the information inside the server lab and put hey store. Do you restore automatically? No, they will not restore automatically until you come here and put run it now and continue. Now they will start to run. If I put running, here they start to run all my informations. They will take some seconds until they finish, but I can come here and refresh this page. In a couple of minutes, they should finish it and that's you're ready to carry on your life and that's all the information will be back here in my next cloud. But uh, let's understand a little bit more about uh, this push. Let's come here and put edit. 
you name it, I can select exactly the same information, push instead of pull, what's the place that I wanted to push, what's the schedule, but now I have take a snapshot. What it means, you can decide take a snapshot, so before they push all the information, they will take a snapshot for the data, and that's uh, you have a uh, kind of save. Let's save it, and now it has been successful. If I can refresh this page, all my data here with exactly the same size that was before, and in this way, I have a copy for all my data that have my true NAS to my next cloud. Or if I want to cancel this one, I can only delete this sync and enable this task to do every day. So they will copy all the information from my true NAS to my next cloud. So guys, I hope that you like this video. In this way, you know how you can do this sync between your true NAS to your next cloud using web dev. So if you like this video and think that it was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like. Consider to subscribe for the channel and see you next time. Bye.